this, um, although I'm presenting it, um, Matthew has had a, a big in, input into this as well. So thank you to him. Um, and it was just about a bit of local discussion between Bradford, Airedale and our local CAMS about which kids they should be referring when. And then actually we thought there was an opportunity here to open this up to the network and get a bit more of a standardised approach for who, which children they should be referring for cardiac um, opinion with regards to the risks of starting stimulant medication. Oh, it's not letting me go forward on the slides now. There we go. Um, has that changed? Yeah, yes, yeah. it has. Thank you. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, so, so this started about a year ago now. We had some keen um, CAMS trainees who wanted to update their referral pathway and just to check actually that they were referring the right children to the cardiac service. So that was really good. Um, following that, I then in Bradford got a, a huge series of really inappropriate referrals, um, which were apparently were due to their, as per their guideline. Um, so we thought we'd do a bit of digging and develop a bit more of a clear and a consistent network guideline for who should get referred. So um, I've reached out to PECS across the region. So a huge thanks to those who got back to me. Um, and the, the feedback generally seemed to be that uh, whether there was a guideline in place or not was hit and miss. And some people weren't sure at all whether there was one. Um, there was varying practice about who does the medical reviews, is it CAMS or GPs, murmurs, go to cardiology but any other problems will go to general peds in some places it go to pediatric cardiology and then there's also been a bit of input there's been certainly in Bradford and one of the other centres with specific ECG teaching session for CAMS but that's not been seen to have a long-lasting effect so quite a lot of different things going on around the region. I've spoken to um, ICC colleagues so Dr Brown um, and also Dr Hares from an EP point of view just for a little bit of their input um, obviously we're discussing as a network and then we're hoping to feed back what we think is a, a sensible guideline to our CAMS colleagues to ask whether they actually then want to adopt that across their you know across the region as well so that was kind of the aim of this bit of work um, so thank you to those that helped with a bit of data now, this is the guideline. I, it's a busy slide, I'm sorry. So this is what they're using. It's a South West Yorkshire Prescribing Committee guideline for, for methylphenidate in kids, basically. So they have to, as part of their assessment, look for exercise, syncope, breathlessness, other cardiovascular symptoms, which is a bit vague, um, heart rate and blood pressure on a centile chart, which is good height and weight on a centile chart, any family history of cardiac disease, do a cardiovascular examination, do an ECG if there's any past history or family history of serious cardiac disease or history of sudden death in a young family member or abnormal examination. So you can see that this is a bit of this is quite vague and they're going to be picking up all kinds of different things that may not be that relevant. Under the drug contraindications, it just says congenital heart disease, which, you know, that's a huge umbrella term, as we know, and many, many, many congenital heart disease lesions would not be at any extra risk. Um, and then the adverse treatment effects, as we know, um, uh, hypertension, but it can cause palpitations, tachycardia, which it ties in nicely with what we've been talking about. So this is their flow chart that they've been using in CAMS in our area. So in the history, any patient who has a past medical history of congenital heart disease or previous cardiac surgery refer to paediatric cardiology, which I don't think that's always necessary. If there's any family history, and interestingly here, they've got first or second degree relatives, which it opens this up hugely, suspected cardiac death under 40, a known cardiomyopathy or cardiac defect under 40 years. So this is any second degree relative with any cardiac defect under the age of 40, the referring kids to us, um, or early onset cardiac disease. So I think you can see why they're referring more than they need to. And then this is our examination slide, which again, I, I questioned quite a lot. So chest pain, if it's stable, do an ECG. If it's abnormal, send it to us, okay. Unstable, refer to the PEDS reg. I mean, I think we should be going to A&E if they're unstable in chest pain, but anyway. Cardiac mur heart murmur, go to paediatric cardiology, fine. Hypertension, um, referencing centile charts, which is good. Paediatric cardiology, which I disagree with. I think that should be general PEDS. Short of breath, I think is general PEDS. Abnormal rhythm, again, I think if they're unstable with an abnormal rhythm, they need A&E, &E, not on a paediatric registrar call. Um, so there's quite a lot here that I think we could um, clarify for them. And then we've looked at, and I won't go through all of this, but we've looked at the NICE guidelines for um, starting stimulant medication in, in ADHD. 
the top bit it's it's asking about the past history in the examination which is similar to the guideline that they were referring to so height weight blood pressure and pulse using centile charts and appropriate cuffs and a cardiovascular assessment um, routine ECG not needed and then here it's a little bit more specific so it's referred for a cardiology opinion if so again it's congenital heart disease or previous cardiac surgery which is a bit vague here it actually specifies first degree relatives for any sudden cardiac death which I think is more appropriate I think that's what the ICC clinic um, would agree with in terms of their referral criteria Again, it mentions shortness of breath, um, syncope on exercise, which obviously is important, palpitations, which are probably fair enough, um, cardiac sounding chest pain, so a bit more specific there, signs of heart failure, would obviously want to see um, a murmur and, and hypertension. So I think I think they're reasonable. Um, so the, this is just some of the examples of referrals I got. And they were all worded, please can you perform a cardiac review regarding starting to move medication as per the guideline? And honestly, there were two, two line referrals. So I got, this child was diagnosed with a murmur when they were young, they were followed up and the cleared is healthy, please can you see them? Um, Mum had a murmur when she was young, unclear of any details or follow up, please can you see the child? No mention of whether the kid had a normal cardiac examination or not. Can you see this kid? The sister's got a murmur, he's got high blood pressure, but didn't tell me what the blood pressure was. Uh, can you see this kid? Mum had TGA. The children have been antenatally screened um, and they've had an ECG, which is normal. Can you see this kid? Mum's got heart murmur. The pathology is not known. I mean, it's just awful, isn't it? Um, another one where the mum had a heart murmur, but no information. And then one where there's a, a teenage lad that was a little bit bradycardic, but that was maybe, maybe a bit more reasonable. On the other hand, um, and Elspeth was telling me, you know, we don't need to see what are clearly not... Um, children that are not particularly high risk but you don't want to miss the one that is so Elspeth had a family referred to her because they were really keen to get this kid on stimulants for what they thought was ADHD significant family history and then the mum had just dropped down dead with with something that was a high risk for being an inherited arrhythmia and actually all these behavioral difficulties in the kid had been since the mum had died and the dad was having a nightmare just trying to you know grief for his wife and look after all his children so you know Elspeth's view is I don't even think this kid's got ADHD I think it's just family bereavement and awful circumstances and this is absolutely a child where you do not want to be giving them stimulant medication so we do need to make sure that we're picking up the, the ones that are at risk so this is what I've come up with um I'll just talk through it quickly and then I'll just be really interested to hear any comments and please, please do say if things need, things need rewording or changing. Um, and we can see if as a network we agree that this is sensible and we can send it back to CAMS. So from looking at evidence of which there is very little and speaking to um, my tertiary colleagues, the bottom line is actually very few children need a cardiac review prior to starting with stimulant medications. Um, of those that do, they will be seen by a paediatrician with an expertise in cardiology, so PEC at the local hospital rather than tertiary cardiology services, which I think is where some of the referrals are kind of directed at, but we've been intersecting them. Um, and actually, only a small proportion of the children that we do see in our cardiac clinics are at an increased risk if they take a stimulant medication. So just as a kind of overview for the CAMS team. Um, so then I've gone through history and examination and what I think we should do with each each bit. So please um, shout out or put things in the chat. So I thought if a child had a known congenital heart disease or arrhythmia, they do not need a referral to paediatric cardiology services. They just need, they, they need to write to the PEC at the local hospital, the named cardiologist for advice about whether a stimulant medication is okay. Um, if they've got chest pain, if they're longstanding and the child's well, do an ECG, which they are good at doing and if that's normal I think GP review in the first instance for chest pain is because we know that most of the time this is not cardiac in children if the ECG is abnormal refer to the PEC with a copy of the ECG obviously if they're acutely unwell short of breath either PEDS registrar or a and &E if it's an emergency if the short of breath and exertion I think just GP review or general PEDS at a local hospital um any history of palpitations do a baseline ECG and either refer to PEC or general paediatricians, depending on how you triage your palpitations in your local hospitals. Faints or syncope, I think should go to general paediatrics um, in the first instance. And then a family, if there's significant family history, I've written, please do an ECG and refer children to the PEC if they meet the criteria below. 
So first degree relative with sudden unexplained death less than 40, first degree relative with a confirmed cardiomyopathy and a first degree relative with a channelopathy, so the inherited rhythm problems. And that was consistent with the um, referral guidance from the ICC team, I think, in terms of which ones that they would want to be seen. And then I've added in a referral is not required in the following scenarios. So if they've congenital heart disease in the parents, the family should have had a fetal echo offered. And actually, if the child's asymptomatic in a normal examination, they don't need seeing routinely. And then cardiac disease and sudden death in second degree relatives, um, the family should be referred to the inherited cardiac disease clinic who can then arrange screening for the most appropriate family member. And then moving on to examination. So heart murmurs come to the PECs. So I think that's absolutely fine. Um, hypertension, I've just put repeat the blood pressure, ensure you've done it right, ensure you're putting it on the um, correct centile chart. Um, if it is raised, that should be general paediatrics, I think, not cardiology at the local hospital. Um, irregular pulse, if they're unwell or unstable, a and &E, and if they're well, do an ECG. And then I've just put a note in there that actually the most common cause is a sinus arrhythmia, which is, which is normal in children. But if the ECG is abnormal, then to send on to the PEC. Signs of heart failure, you need to be picking up the phone to general paediatrics in the first instance and getting an, um, an urgent review. So my summary at the end of various discussions and looking at guidelines and things of children that actually need a new referral to the cardiology clinic is family history, sudden death in a first degree relative that's likely cardiac less than 40, family history of cardiomyopathy in a first degree relative, family history of a channelopathy in a first degree relative, Murmur on examination, not previously investigated or already under cardiology follow-up and abnormal ECGs 